All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we have a Chicago Bulls video. We are going to talk about kind of what to expect here in the next 10 days without Nikola Vucevic, who I guess he tested positive for COVID-19, so he's going to miss at least five basketball games, and like I said, at least 10 days while he's in protocol. Now, Tony Bradley, Eliza Johnson, apparently those two will be handling the bulk of his absence. We got a tweet out of KC Johnson on Twitter. He said, while Tony Bradley and Eliza Johnson will handle a bulk of Nikola Vucevic's absence, Billy Donovan said he's really considering small ball lineups featuring Derek Jones Jr. or Javante Green at center. I think that... <laughs> All the tweets were saying, Io DeSumo. Um, I think this is too small. <laughs> I think this is definitely way too small. I am very interested to see what it would look like, though. So I'm all for it just until... My one thing with Billy Donovan, though, and this is what I fear when I saw this tweet, is he tends to continue and continue to put out rotations that maybe just aren't really meshing. So... <laughs> That's the only fear there, but hey, Derek Jones Jr., he's extremely versatile, extremely athletic. Javante Green, I've been very impressed with him this year, so <laughs> I mean, I'm open to the challenge, but Tony Bradley and Johnson, those two guys, they're going to be handling the bulk of the duties. Before we go any further into this video, guys, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, hitting that sub button, trying to hit 9,000 subs by the end of the year. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter down below. The link is in my bio in the description of this video tony bradley i'm actually really really excited to see tony bradley the other day other day against the the other day against the nets he put up four points eight rebounds couple of blocks threw in a steal at least so tony bradley he's extremely underrated he's just a little on that younger side has never really been in the spotlight kind of has always had backup duties Elise Johnson, he, I, I, I'm just, I was wondering why he's been out of the rotation. I couldn't really figure out why he's been out of the rotation. It's awesome. That's what I'm saying is this injury, or not even an injury, this COVID, it's kind of like a blessing in disguise because it's going to open a lot of bull's eyes to, first off, Tony Bradley and Elise Johnson have a lot of talent. And second off, it's going to remind, it's going to basically show everybody that hey the bulls do need more depth like they just they they need more depth at that big man position and what that brings in return is it finally brings bulls fans who have been hating on Vucevic the way he started this season they're finally going to be able to recognize his value to this team because, I mean, Nikola Vucevic defensively, he's having a phenomenal year. Yeah, offensively, it's been a little streaky. This COVID case comes at a very tough time for Nikola because it looked like in the last couple of games, especially in the last game before he tested positive, he had really started to get going offensively again so defensively he's literally got the best defensive rating he's ever had in his NBA career and so I mean man you're gonna really see wow Nikola Vucevic is extremely underrecognized on this Bulls team what would they do without him I don't know what we would do without Vucevic but hopefully this shows the front office that hey I mean, I mean I'm hoping Tony Bradley and Eliza can hold pretty much well on their own but still at the end of the day if you get an injury like this if you were to actually get an injury to Nikola Vucevic if he were to go down with an actual injury not COVID for a couple of months even the end of the season I mean the Bulls would be screwed I mean they, they need more depth they need like a veteran center a veteran power forward and as I mentioned in like all my Bulls videos I'm eyeing Derek Favors I'm definitely eyeing Derek Favors DeMar DeRozan, he's also going to take a big bulk of the minutes at power forward. I would imagine last season, the year before that, ever since he's gotten to San Antonio before he got traded to the Bulls, he he played power forward. He was the, the starting power forward for San Antonio, and he was averaging you know 22 points per game. But what was so nice was he was still averaging seven or so assists per game. So DeMar can definitely play that power forward position for five or six or however many games they plan on going or they plan on losing Nicola for 
But yeah, you saw Marco Simovic, he got called up as well. You might see his name get called a little bit, but it seems like Tony Bradley is going to be that guy. And then Eliza, another option. And if they decide to go small ball with Derek Jones Jr., I actually am very curious to see how that would pan out. I <laughs> I have no idea how that's going to pan out. Who knows? It might be exactly what the Chicago Bulls have been kind of missing, like that something to keep in that back pocket. You look at a lot of teams like the Golden State Warriors, for example, they're not big at all. Like they're really not that big as far as like seven footers go at this current time because you're without James Wiseman, but they still have guys like Kevon Looney out there playing you know, 15, 20 minutes a night. You got guys like Draymond Green. Andrew Wiggins isn't by any means small either. So they kind of make up for it in other pieces, but they're an extremely efficient basketball team. And they're actually playing them tonight, the Golden State Warriors. And I wanted to give a little bit of preview. I feel like a lot of people will be watching after the game, though, so I don't want to go too much into it. But the Bulls, you're getting a big test here. The good news is against Golden State is you don't need the size. So Chicago, I mean, tonight, Tony Bradley, I, I can't imagine him playing more than 25 minutes. I don't even think he'll get to 25. I think he'll be somewhere in the low 20s. Eliza, same thing, 15, 20 minutes from him. The Bulls, I think they'll deploy a small ball lineup or pretty small lineup for a good portion of tonight's game against Golden State. This is a big test. Now, Chicago, they're going on a little bit of a – they're still in the bulk of this little – tough stretch like pretty much all of november is this tough little stretch and the worst part is the bulls have just played three straight games at home and now they're going to be hitting the road so you're in golden state you're in la to play the clippers back to back actually so this sunday they play the clippers and then on monday night they play the los angeles lakers then on Wednesday, they head up to Portland to play the Trailblazers, and then they head back down to Denver on Friday to play the Nuggets. And then if you want to keep going, you got the Knicks and you got the Pacers. So another tough little stretch. They're, they haven't left this little difficult stretch. It's just more on the West Coast. You got a little West Coast swing here, a little West Coast road trip. So typically in years past, this is kind of where you see the Bulls just absolutely suffer. I mean, I mean absolutely suffer, but hey, who did they have? They didn't have, I mean, Wendell Carter. I mean, they didn't, and no disrespect to Wendell, but like he was our starting center. I mean, you had Kobe White starting point guard. It was just a completely different roster is what I'm trying to get at. So the game tonight is on ESPN. I can't wait to watch it. This could be an awesome game. That's it for me, guys. Drop some comments down below on who you would like to see step up in replacement for Nikola Vucevic in the next five or six games or however long he's going to be out. That's it for me, guys. Hit the like button. Peace.